Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C Sharp. And I'm so I, I really apologize for the hiatus because uh, school just got. Blech. But anyways, I'm in spring break right now, so hopefully I can get all of C Sharp done and a whole bunch of C plus plus as well. Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to be learning about the labels as a control that's uh, up here. Uh, we'll be learning about try and catch. Not not so much. It's kind of overwhelming, but don't worry about it. Um, comments variables and data types. So let's start out with a label. So going in here, um, labels and any other control, almost all these controls, I'm not going to go over till the end of this level one series, uh, because, well, it, because you don't really need to use them now, but once you've learned all the core programming concepts, using all these will be uh, quite simple. And we, we're going to be going through much harder stuff before we get to these anyways. But anyways, just click whatever you'd like, you don't need to drag. You can just click it once and click it wherever. And then, as you can see, you can just click it wherever you'd like, and it'll drag. So labels, basically, what these are is it just displays text. That's all it pretty much does. Um, you can change the name of how it's read in the program itself. So I'm just going to call it LBL, short for label, output. And for the default text that actually appears in there, I'm going to make it empty. You can also uh, mess with the auto size as well. In such cases, I like to make it false so I can actually see um, what's going on with it and all. So, and then you can change the border. Where's the border? Make it fix 3D. It's pretty. Yeah, see, that looks that looks nice. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. That's the only control that we're going to be using f uh, for this tutorial. We'll soon be learning about text boxes and buttons, and that's about it f until the end of the series. Okay, so. Uh, let's go into our form load event. So let's double click the form itself and basically all of our code that goes within our form load event just by double clicking it uh, is what's executed as soon as you start the application. And yeah, that's about it. That's pretty easy to remember. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to show you are comments. Now comments, what they are, are basically notes for the for us programmers to see. The users will never see see them at all. The people that will be using your application, just the people that work behind the scenes here that see the code. Basically, they're like footnotes or just like side notes to help. Um, it's kind of like separates paragraphs in an essay detailing what the following block of code does. So, in order to create a comment, just uh, push two forward slashes, and then the text turns green. Then everything after that is a comment, and they are ignored by the compiler, or ignored during runtime. They don't do anything. So, this is a sample comment. Now, what if you have a really long comment that you want to have go over multiple lines? Well, you don't want to just keep doing this, right? Well, we actually will in um, certain situations, but not now. In order to do that, forward slash, then an asterisk. Notice how the rest of these guys all turn into green text as well. So you type whatever you want here, right? And then when you get to the end, um, another asterisk, and then another forward slash, and then notice that's all your green text right here. So just mirror image right there. And that's all. So I'm just going to get rid of this multi-line one, because we don't need that. And we'll most likely not be using multi-line comments that much anyways. OK, so now let's do variables and data types. Now before we do this, I actually want to show you something that's kind of complicated and you might this this is going to be a little bit overwhelming, but I really don't want you to become intimidated in any way because what I'm about to show you is not something I'm going to explain until later because we can't really use it till later. Probably in the next tutorial. I could probably show you in the next tutorial because we'll be doing math in the next tutorial. But um I don't want it to be scary to you because it's kind of big, but I don't want you to get into the habit of writing code without it because it's very um, necessary and that's called the try catch and finally not so much the finally but I'll, I'll explain it all and basically that's if you have errors during the run during the runtime that causes your application to crash when it would normally crash instead it would go into another section of code to execute that as well so it will make perfect sense don't worry so you just type in try an open curly brace and a closing curly brace so during this form one load event, all the code that you want to have tried to be executed will go in between uh, these two curly braces. Then below, 
Uh, I sh shouldn't go that that far. Whoops. Right here, type in catch along with an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace. And basically, this is the, this is the code that you'll be normally typing in. And the catch will be if there's an error up here, then the co this code will execute instead. And it's usually something very simple like a message box. So basically, you type in message box dot show. And oh, oh my, that's actually something very, uh, another very important thing. There's a lot of important things to get out of the way in the beginning. Okay, but anyways, your first set of information will be the um, when a message box pops up. So imagine this is a rectangle. The main text that displays will go right here. This is the main text. And I'll be showing you this in action in the next tutorial. Comma. And then what goes right here, you see up here in the upper left of this window, well, the upper left of that little box that pops up is what that will be. So I could type in, like, oops or something. Followed by message box buttons. So choose what buttons you'd like to show up. I'll just go with the OK button. And message box icon. Now, allow me to actually show you this really quickly, too. You see this little thing that keeps popping up? This is called IntelliSense. And basically, this is uh, the uh, this is just Visual Studio that has this. But uh, basically what it is, is it tries to guess what you're typing in as you type it in. So as I type things in, it tries to narrow down what I'm looking for. So I just typed in message box. And, you know, you can go to whatever you'd like. And you can either press enter or tab. When I press enter, it always goes down to the next line. I don't like that. So I press tab so my uh, little cursor thing does not go on to the next line because I don't want it to. Okay, then followed by dot. And, oh, I already did, I already did buttons. Uh, I want to do. I want to do icons. Message box. Icon. There we go. And right here, this will actually control the sound that comes out. Comes out. And again, I I'll show you in the next one. So we want the error one to come up. And that's all. Now, for every line of code that you complete, at the very end, you need to put a semicolon right there. See that? A little semicolon. Uh, and that basically tells the compiler that you're done with that line of code. Now notice that it's not always the case. You do not put a semicolon at the end of a comment. Um, anytime you create a function or a loop or a try catch or if statements, we'll learn about all of those. All of those different things I just said always have an opening and curly brace. And at the end of the curly brace, you do not put a semicolon. You do not do that. So it's just the, these normal lines of text right here, except for the comments, basically. And notice for like the form load events and stuff, there's no semicolon at the end here. So don't do that. Okay, so we have a little message. And the last one is finally... Uh, I never use this one, so... I'll bring it up again in the next video when I show you, but I don't really use it. Finally, basically the code that goes in here is code that always executes. Whether the try is successful or not, the code that goes in the finally always executes. But I never use the finally. Um, there's really no point in it, in my opinion. Okay, so let's try something. So we created a label. We called it label output. Let's try to put something in there, shall we? So if I type in label output, dot, then text, uh, I can set it equal to whatever I'd like. Maybe a string, perhaps. And notice how I put a semicolon at the end. So I can type in, hello world. So when the form loads, do you think the uh, words hello world will pop up? Let's try it out. Let's press F5. Hello world. There it is. Eh, it's not centered. Let's center that really quickly. I'm a bit of a OCD that way. Where is it? Text align. Let's put it in the center center. There we go. Save. Save. Hello world. Oh, by the way, you should always click the save all. I, I should have done that. That's to make sure um, any changes you made in all your tabs are saved at once. If you see an asterisk, uh, I think it goes right here or something like that, that means uh, there's been uh, modifications to the code. So if I do something like this, see now there's an asterisk there. So that means there's a change. Okay, let's see what else I'm going to do. Okay, so next will be uh, variables. So s sure, you can just do something like this. Um, you can put a number right off the bat like five now because labels always read strings anytime you put a number here look how I have a 
cannot implicitly convert type integer to type string? Well, this is just a plain number right here, right? So anytime you have a number there, make sure you put dot and then two string followed by your parentheses there. And that will convert it, that number, into a string. If it's, um, I'll, I'll, you know what, I'll go through the numbers really quickly here. So with the variables, okay. So when declaring a var variable, so I'll put it here, de declaring a variable, um, this is the format that you go about doing it. The first thing you put down is a data type, and then name of variable, semicolon technically. Okay, so what is a variable you might, um, you might be uh, asking me? Well, a variable is basically uh, a piece of uh, memory being reserved for information on your computer. So the data type will specify what type of memory you'll be saving, and the name of the variable is just whatever you want to call it, uh, which you'll be using for reference later, anytime you want to use that variable. So you could just call x if you wanted, but that's too vague, so try to avoid simple cliche variable names like x or n, you know, if you're into math and stuff. So different data types. You know, I should. You know what? I'm going to use a multi-line as such. Okay. So different data types. So for integer data types, you just type in int. And basically, an integer, integer, as you might already know, is a number. Is basically a whole positive or negative number, like this five here. So there's a whole bunch of different ints. There's also uh, unsigned ints, but we won't be going through that now. But um, ba basically, this is just a data type that you can put a decimal number assigned to it, but it will only take what's in the front. So if you sign an int equal to like 5.5, .5, it'll only read the, the first five. If it's 5.9, it's not going to round it or anything like that. It's just going to keep it at five. So that's an int. Um, there's, a, there's a number of other int data types, but when we use integers, you'll almost always use int. None of the other different ones that are, that are out there. Okay, so floating types. Basically, floating types are ones that have decimals. So the one that we'll be using is double. Um, there's also decimal as well, uh, but we won't really be using that. You'll almost always be using double. So, so this is our standard integer. This is our standard double, which does support decimals, both positive and negative. And we need one more. Actually, no, there's two more. Right? Nah, I'll show you three more. So string types. The only one that you'll need to know is string. And basically, that's a string of characters. So you put a whole bunch of things. It's always between quotes, as such. And what's the next one I want to show you? Probably char. Oh, by the way. All, notice how they're all lowercase, and you'll see in a moment. So char types, um, the only, what char is short for is character. And basically, that's a string that only has one character in it, and you only use single quotes. You don't use double quotes like you do with strings. So you just put like A there, or B, or C, something like that. And lastly, uh, I guess I can show you Boolean. So Boolean can be true or false, something like that. Okay, so th these are all the different data types I want to show you. So we're kind of running out of time, so I got I to gotta book it. So let me just show you an example of creating a data type. So I'll create an int, an integer. I'll call it sample variable is equal to 5. Now I'll call it, I'll call it 334, semicolon. The green underline is just that it's not being used. So let's use it. Let's set this uh, label equal to sample variable dot two string. Don't forget about the two string when you're working with numbers. So uh, yeah, I'll click save. And when I run this application, now 334 is there. So remember, you can use it for all of these. So you have int for an integer without decimals. Um, if doubles do support decimals strings, remember to bound them by the double quotes, characters are the single quotes, booleans true and false, and there's a few others but they're not really important. I know, I know what you're thinking, 
well, they must be important. No, no, you don't really use them, especially in an introductory course. So this is all um, I'm going to be showing you for the data types and how to declare a variable and to initialize it. So, whoops. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you, and I'll see you next time.